Good morning, Dr. Warren. This is Rebecca Johnson in the Colorado Springs area, and I'm all in. Hi, Dr. Lee. It's Kathy from Ohio. Ah, thank you for the grace of letting us procrastinators start on the 8th instead of the 1st. I was slightly in. Now I'm all in. Thanks. Good morning, my friend. Hope you're doing well. It is early in the morning. Ta-ta and up or having coffee. And it's August 9th, and we're all in. So, you know, yesterday I told you um, if you hadn't started yet, it wasn't too late. You can start anytime. You can start all in whenever you are ready. Now is the time. And so we got that beautiful voicemail that you just heard a moment ago, and, and uh, I'm just glad that that resonated with some folks. Listen, I got bad news for you. Tata and I recorded what I think was the best episode of Tuesdays with Tata we've ever done on Sunday afternoon, Psalm 51. We had a great talk about what it means really to be all in with, with um, honesty towards God with who you are and where you are and, and what you're doing in your life and, and how that pays such a beautiful dividend. Um, and, and we had this great talk, and I got up this yesterday morning to edit that episode for preparation for releasing it today, and the voice, the, the um, audio file is garbage. Somehow the computer corrupted that file, and it's just unintelligible. You can't make it out at all. And um, so I spent couple hours yesterday morning and then another hour or two this morning as I got up super early to see if I could figure out some digital magic to rescue that episode and it's just not happening so um you know I told you I would was really going to try to have uh, all in August be 31 brand new episodes for you um but what we made for today just isn't there so we feel like that's a that's a form of this resistance that we've been talking about there's some spiritual warfare going on here because that episode is important so as it turns out, um, I'm speaking to a bunch of teachers teachers this morning, and we don't have any surgery scheduled today. So Lord willing, Tata and I will be able to sit back down later today and re-record that episode. And, and maybe there's something we were supposed to say that we didn't get said. Um, maybe there's something this time, or maybe the timing just wasn't right. Or maybe, and I prayed about it last night, that God would show me what to share with you today since the the episode we had ready for you uh, wasn't going to go out. So I, I, in my heart this morning when I got up, there's a, an episode I did a while back then that was just really just about, you. it was called, you'll feel better if you don't. There's these times when we're trying to press in and we're trying to do things right and God's calling us to some new um, part of our lives and that old resistance pops up and we're and we're tempted or sometimes just sort of inertia um, if that's a word inertia um, I have to ask my sister the English teacher about that one Michelle you let me know if inertia is a word <laughs> just made that up I think um, sometimes we we sort of we, we come up to a big task we come up to a big moment and we're about to have a breakthrough and and because of the breakthrough seems scary or hard, we slide back down into our previous problem. Remember Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference, that I told you about before. Um, he says you don't rise to the occasion when the pressure's on. You fall back to your preparation. Well, another thing to think about in that re- in that regard is that sometimes we don't we don't rise up out of our habits and patterns and things that we've always done to comfort ourselves or numb ourselves or or take our mind off something hard sometimes we don't rise up to those things we just kind of fall back into our old routine so it's not that that we're evil or, or failures or whatever we just it's so easy to slide back into the inertia of sameness that it's always been so this is day nine of all in august and this is about the time that you're going to hit one of those walls you're going to start feeling some resistance and it's going to be easy to just sort of slip back into the way it used to be to sort of go back to how it was and, and kind of abandon the all-in call so whatever area of your life it is that you're pursuing this this new mindset this i'm going all in i'm finally going to just give it all to god let him open those doors and places i've been hiding behind and break down idols in my life and and get out of habits and, and start new ones and and really fix a relationship or really break through professionally or whatever it is that you've decided this is your month to do now's about the time just eight nine ten eleven twelve days in is about when it's going to start getting hard and it's going to get real easy to just slide back in to some other way and let's say that you're trying to change the way you talk to people you're trying to use uh, less 
um, coarse language or less uh, of offensive language, or you're trying to find new ways to uh, use your words for God's glory. Well, sometimes you, you have this tension built up inside you, and it's easy to just to slip into an old pattern of how you talk to people. And this week we saw a good example of that, in, or a good example of what happens if you can be if you're careless with your words when um, there was a football coach at the University of Oklahoma that. Um, was giving a class uh, some instruction to his wide receivers and he noticed that one of the players wasn't paying attention and the player was uh, goofing around on an iPad. So the coach just grabbed the iPad and said, well, let's let's just read to the class what it is that you're working on. And he read some stuff that was on the the kid's screen and apparently it contained some racially insensitive language and the coach got fired for reading out loud somebody else's stuff. So the coach didn't write it, and the coach wasn't looking at that website. The coach wasn't doing any of those things. He just read out loud and said some words that were hurtful to students to hear a coach in that kind of power position say, and this guy lost his job over that. So the, the, the idea that when we're trying to go all in, we have to be very diligent and very careful. Like the world is watching us. The world is paying attention. If you're going to try to set a higher standard, take a higher path to, to really achieve what God's got for you, there's going to be some opportunity for other people to snipe at you or for you to, to make a careless mistake and fumble and hurt your witness or hurt your ability to accomplish those things. So so just I want to give you back this old episode called You'll Feel Better If You Don't. It's got some ideas in it that kind of resonate around this idea of being very careful, as Paul said, with how you live, not as unwise but wise. We're trying to make a difference in the in the world, right? We're trying to, to break free from old things that have held us back and break into something new. And this is about the time we're going to start hitting some resistance. So since Tata and I can't bring you the new episode, I'm going to give you this old one, and hopefully we'll be able to get that recorded and we'll be able to release it later today. And you'll just have a bonus episode and we'll still have our, our full slate of new content for august um but i needed to give you this and i feel like there's somebody out there who's going to hit and it's going to be helpful so if, if it was you if you hear this this morning and this is something that you needed to hear then hit me up with an email at lee at dr lee warren.com or a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash dr lee warren and let me know i love it when when um so God nudges me to do something and somebody else says, hey, that's exactly what I needed. So let me hear from you. Speakpike.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Hey, we're going all in. Pray for me as I speak to these educators today and pray for our daughter Kimber and grandson Jace. They'll be traveling tomorrow from Virginia. They're going to come visit for a few days and we're super excited about that. So I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing today that you're all in with us. Check out the book All In by Mark Batterson if you haven't read it. If you can't afford it, send me an email. I'll send you a copy. We have a few copies that we can afford to send out uh, and I would love Love for you to read that book with us, All In by Mark Batterson. Listen, it's day nine. It's time to go all in. It's going to be easy to slip up and kind of fall back off the wayside. Be careful how you live. Be careful what you say. Be careful to pursue these goals that God is calling you to. And don't be afraid to press harder into All In August despite the resistance. And the good news is, my friend, you can start today. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.podbean.com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com, and if you like the show, Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Um, I've had lots of traffic, lots of email, lots of conversations about the episode I did two weeks ago about cussing. Believe it or not, people are still emailing me about that. I got one this week about whether or not it's okay to use strong language in a funny story or a joke. 
And I'll admit I've got some really hilarious real stories of patients and people over the years who said things that were hilarious, but they involve a word or two that I wouldn't use in a real conversation. But the more I think about these things, I just keep going back to what the Bible says in Ephesians four twenty nine and 30 when it says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. The NIV says, let no unwholesome word escape your mouth. So that's a pretty high standard. So I don't know the answer. Apply it for yourself. Pray about it. That's what the Bible says. So we'll go from there. But um, the real issue, the, the reason I brought that whole thing up, is that we are given the ability as humans to do self-brain surgery and choose how we let our frontal lobes influence our behavior. We, we have these giant frontal lobes that can influence the deeper parts of our brain. And they can influence how we behave when the amygdala and limbic systems and the neurotransmitters are going crazy and they're telling us to react instead of carefully respond. We have the ability to control those things with our frontal lobes, and that's what God gave us. So we ought to use our brain to bridle our tongue, to bridle our behavior, and we'll be happier. And if you do that, your life will look a little bit holier, a little bit cleaner. It'll be a little more attractive to people who are maybe looking for something that you have that they don't have. You'll be more influential if you clean that up a little bit. And if you're a writer, your language and your sentence construction skills will improve as you avoid the low-hanging fruit of choosing swear words to convey emotion. Cleaning up your language really does improve your brain chemistry. It makes other people feel better. It prevents you from ever casting God in a poor light if you're known as one of his followers because that's really what it means when it says to take the Lord's name in vain. If you're known as a person who wears the Lord's name and you're living in such a way that brings dishonor to him, you're taking his name in vain. It's not just about words that you say that have his name in them. It's a bigger standard than that. So... That's all I have to say about that. You can go back and listen to the other episode. We're going to leave that behind, but people are still emailing me about it. But while we're talking about self-brain surgery to help us bridle our tongues, today I want to talk about the issue of temptation. Now, it'd be easy to turn that into an episode about sin or religious things, and that's not my job. I'm not a preacher. But as you know, for me, my faith and my science are all wrapped up in one another. I can't separate them. So you're going to get brain science and some Bible verses every time. I'm sorry, I just can't help myself. That's who I am. But I want to talk about what happens when you're tempted to do something. When you're tempted to do something, either whether it's a sinful behavior, like sleeping with somebody you're not supposed to or cheating on a business deal, or whether it's just whether you should buy a certain thing or eat that second piece of Lisa's Nutella French toast. You should, by the way, eat that. Um, you almost always get some kind of nudge in your heart or spirit about that thing, don't you? You almost always get some sort of, of nudge about what you should do when you're trying to make a decision. In my worldview, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's the part of God that gives us conscience and helps us guide our decisions. And if you're attentive to your own heart, you will agree, I think, that you almost always get some guidance or some sort of nudge, or if you're not spiritual, you would at least probably agree that you usually sort of know in your heart if you should or shouldn't do something before you do it, right? Well, today I want to talk about that for a few minutes. Because when you're agonizing over a decision and you feel that little tug telling you no, You'll usually feel better if you don't. So I want to figure out why that is and how to use it to our advantage in our quest to become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And I want to start today. Hey, I'm so glad to have you listening. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa Warren. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get that done, you can get the show notes and more on my website at WLeeWarnMD. And if you like the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode. We're almost to 10,000 downloads a month. And if you share it with your friends around the world, we'll get there this month. I want to have 10,000 downloads in the month of August. I'd love to have your help with that. Hey, I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and my podcast is all about helping you learn to change your mind so you can change your life. So let's get after it. 
Okay, 1 Corinthians 10.13 in the Bible. This is your one Bible verse for the day. 1 Corinthians 10.13 is the famous temptation verse. Here it is. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And as an aside, this verse is profoundly misused. It's misused a lot, and people use it to say that God will do something that he never says he will do. People say, God will never give you more than you can handle, and they use this verse to say that. But the fact is, he will, in fact, give you more than you can handle sometimes. He will put even, if he has to, he'll put a stumbling stone, a stolperstein in your path so that you will fall and humble yourself before him if that's what it takes to get your attention because he has a better way for you. And sometimes he will bring you low. That's not what this verse is talking about. This verse is specifically talking about temptation. Read it again, 1 Corinthians ten thirteen. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Basically, everybody's been through the thing you're going through before. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. Listen, he's not talking about trials or trouble or illness or loss or anything except temptation here. He's saying that when you are being tempted, he will be faithful and present opportunities for you to avoid the trap. I just want you to think about that for a second. You're about to click purchase on Amazon. You're about to, you've added something to your cart and you're about to click complete purchase for that sweet doodad that you've had your eye on, even though you already have 12 of them. Note, as an aside, this doesn't apply to guitars, guns, women's shoes, or handbags. You can buy as many of those as you want. Just kidding. But just before you push the button, you feel it. Wait on that. You don't really need it. You hear that little thing in your head. It happens over and over and over again. Right before you send that angry text message or that email in which you're about to tell somebody off, you get a little nudge, I shouldn't send this. Right before you laugh and thank that person at the office for the compliment that you know is a little more than just a compliment, you know in your heart that you ought to say something like, thanks, my wife tells me that all the time, or hey, that's what my husband says. You should shut that thing down. and You know it in your heart. Right before you sign a contract, just as you're about to resign from a job or accept a position or agree to a dinner or buy a car or click on a link or download that porn video you're about to accept an invitation to a hunting trip even though you've already been on five this year and your kids want you to stay home you hear that thing don't you don't do that wait on that don't send that don't buy that don't download that almost in every case whether it's a spiritual issue a practical issue or just some normal everyday decision you usually if you take the time to listen receive some sort of guidance in your heart don't you and the guidance is often You'll feel better if you don't. Here's the deal. A lot of the decisions that we make in life come down to us trying to fill a hole somewhere or to feel something. We drink alcohol or use drugs or food or sex or shopping or TV as surrogates or to cover up something that we don't want to feel. We send angry or passive-aggressive text messages or we use our words as weapons during an argument because we are scratching the itch of the lower levels of our brains. We are looking for that quick hit of dopamine and oxytocin release that make us feel a little bit better. But when we do the self-brain surgery and let our frontal lobes put a little bit of space between add to cart and checkout, we can hear that little voice. Hey, friend, you'll feel better if you don't. So the entire point of this episode, this short episode, is this. When you manage to avoid the temptation to not click purchase or send the message or flirt back or sign that deal that's a little shady. You don't get that quick hit of neurotransmitter. But the next day, when the chemical storm of depression or loneliness or whatever you were feeling the night before passes, you'll wake up and you'll feel so much better. You'll say, holy cow, I was about to buy something I can't afford or whew, I could have really ruined my marriage or my career or my future with that decision. In the light of day, When you've allowed yourself to be calm and quiet and listen, or you've exercised and gotten those internal endorphins going and your brain is alive and clear and your heart is open, that's when you'll be able to see the wisdom in the fact that you said no to that thing. And you had the eyes to see how God kept his word and gave you a way out. One of the problems we have these days 
is that we are overstimulated, overcaffeinated, overmedicated, sleep deprived, and overwhelmed. And that's why we're going so fast and we don't stop to say, should I really do this thing? We don't stop often enough to ask ourselves. It's like we just go on cruise control and we react to everything. I've watched a lot of people over the years who had injuries to their frontal lobes. Those folks are slaves to the more basal influences of the more emotional parts of their brains. They can't control their impulses. They take their clothes off. They stand too close. They laugh too loud. They do inappropriate things. They are socially inappropriate and impulsive, and they do weird stuff because their frontal lobes are not influencing their behavior that, that they should, the way that they should. But you don't have to do that. Because you have intact frontal lobes. You can remind your amygdala who's in charge. You can stop long enough to listen and hear that little voice. And whether you think it's just an evolutionarily acquired electrical impulse or the literal presence of the Holy Spirit of God in your heart that tells you to wait, however you feel about that, you can listen to that little voice. You can sleep on it. Check another site for a better price. Don't respond tonight to that email until you've had some sleep. Think twice before you agree to that thing or go do that thing. And most of the time, you'll feel better if you don't. Now look, friend, I'm just trying to help you here. I've seen how hard it is to recover from the times that we hit send or say those words or eat those things or have that third glass or fall off the wagon again or fudge those numbers. I've seen it over and over again. And almost every time, you'll feel better if you don't. You have two things, we have two things that God gave us that sets us apart from the lower animals. We have a conscience and a ginormous frontal lobe. Yeah, ginormous is a neuroanatomy term. No, it's not. I made that up. Ginormous is a made-up word that just means something really, really, really big. We have huge frontal lobes in relation to other animals, and that's why we can control our behavior. And that's why we have a conscience, because God's Holy Spirit is in there influencing and allowing us to think about what we think about. Your frontal lobes can be trained to help you and not to hurt you. They are there to help you influence and control the other parts of your brain and to help get you across the finish line of a moment or a day or an interaction or a conversation without blowing everything up for yourself and for other people. Listen, this is good stuff. You need to use those frontal lobes. And friend, God is faithful He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will always give you a way out. And you'll feel better if you don't. Look, this is self-brain surgery. It's biblical. It's consistent with neuroscience. It's good self-care and it will help. But if you want it to help, you have to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren. Substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day. Help me follow, 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 oh Lord, help me follow wherever.
and Lord, help me follow wherever I 